shekels, shekels, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Zelensky can't wait for more shekels to be poured into Ukraine. The most corrupt government on earth, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and the war in Ukraine has been escalating with President Putin has been on the ropes there. So we're going to talk about that tonight on the report from Tiger Mountain. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. You know, the disaster in the Ukraine. Uh, obviously, um, you know, uh, uh, since the color revolution um, in 2014, when um, the globalists did a coup and took over, um, uh, you know, Ukraine, and I think they've been, I think they've had eight years to lay a trap for President Putin. Um, you know, what do I mean by a trap? Well, I, I think that um, they wanted to draw Russia into this war, so they've done everything they can to try and provoke this war, um, and so that uh, Russia would be tempted to invade. And I imagine they probably gave the impression that it would be a quick, a quick job that Putin could just, you know, barrel on through to Kiev in, in a couple of weeks, and that would be the end of that, so to speak. But uh, I think they've had eight years to prepare, uh, and I imagine they've um, fortified the place. They've um, got, you know, the, the finest weapons from Western countries in there. So, you know, there's obviously been a lot of planning to sabotage Putin. Uh, any kind of invasion of Ukraine, and I think they've had eight years. And I think during COVID was probably a time when they really, um, you know, really got into motion preparing for this. And then did you, did you notice the way when COVID kind of faded away in March around the world? That's when this uh, war with Ukraine kicked off almost immediately. World War Three started almost immediately. So you know, I mean, Mr. Zelensky, the uh, uh, charming Jewish leader of the Ukraine, um, who's basically interested in destroying the country and maintaining this war as long as possible, um, has had. Some some um, successes uh, pushing the Russian forces back and uh, apparently it does seem like Putin is calling up reservists in uh, in Russia himself. So basically he started conscription in Russia, uh, which I imagine with some people won't be that popular. So it's obviously a major escalation uh, of the war, which is obviously just going to mean one thing, the further destruction of Ukraine. This war should have been ended uh, within a couple of weeks of its starting, but it's clear that Western powers want this war. They want it to go on as long as possible because they believe it's um, draining the Russian resources, the Russian military, which of course it would be, and also putting um, Putin's um, leadership under pressure from the possibility of an internal coup. Because I guess they figure if the war goes so badly for a long, long time, possibly years, that eventually maybe um, there will be some kind of move against Putin, whether it be peaceful where Putin hands power over somebody else, or not so peaceful where there's a kind of uh, bloody coup against Putin. Obviously that's what they're going for, because they're interested in regime change in Russia. And obviously the West itself, America can't invade Russia, so they have to draw it into this conflict in the Ukraine, which they've done by killing ethnic Jews, uh, ethnic Russians in, in the East and also by uh, essentially promising NATO will become uh, a member Ukraine will become a member state of NATO and allow nuclear weapons to be placed along the Russian border which obviously doesn't go uh, down very well with Moscow so you know I think this is a terrible situation um, you know obviously I'm not on either side of this war, though I am sympathetic to what Russia is going through. I think Russia is the, uh, they are the victims of this in many senses, even though they were kind of almost forced to invade to stop this globalist encroachment upon their border. So uh, obviously it's a, a tougher fight than uh, maybe Russia first thought. And obviously, um, you know, Alexander Dugan's daughter passed away, you know, when she got blown up recently, which is very sad. And, um, you know, um, you know, I think it's a terrible situation what's happening over there in, in Ukraine. And I hope that peace is, is brought to the region as soon as possible, because I mean, what the hell is going to be left in Ukraine if, if now Russia is escalating and now the West is going to pump more weapons and more money and blah, blah, blah. I mean, there'd be nothing left of the country, you know, which is, I think, what the globalists want, of course. Because, you know, I mean, it's like what happened in these, you know, countries like Iraq, Syria. I mean, you know, the, you see these bombed out pictures of these places after the Americans have been there. You know, they, they promise to bring democracy. And you just see, they're not just in democracy, they're just in destruction. I mean, all those wars in the Middle East, you know, they're just in destruction of all the countries surrounding Israel. That's it. You know, and obviously they started to cause trouble in Iran with this recent uh, uprising there, which we'll discuss in another report from Tiger Mountain. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is my thoughts on the escalation of the war in Ukraine. And um, let's pray for peace. But, you know, if the globalists have got anything to do with it, there won't be.